Tommy V in Michigan. He was on fire this morning. Hey, thank you, Tommy V in Michigan. Th that, yes, sir. If you, if you share my prayers. Mm -hmm. my Tommy V's on. Yeah, we'll jump over there. Tommy V doing great stuff over there. Okay, uh, Robert Moore, Council, step up, please. Okay, calling case number 2405699301, Thurston, Michigan versus Robert Ivan Moore. They're appearing in front of me in person in court. Council, your, your appearance for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Neighborhood Defender Service by Cheryl Quick, P83973, on behalf of Robert Moore. Mr. Moore is also present. Mr. Moore, state your name for the record. Robert Moore, Your Honor. Okay, who's representing the people? Lisa Coyle, appearing on behalf of the people, Your Honor. Okay, counsel, you wait for my reading stand mute? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Corbin or not, good to plead on behalf of Mr. Moore. Argument at the bond, Mrs. Coyle. Your Honor, in this matter, the people are requesting 10,000 cash surety, no contact with the complainant. This uh, case involves not only a physical assault, but an assault with a handgun. Um, I, my understanding is um, Ms. the defendant, Mr. Moore, is a CPL holder. He has several guns registered to him. I'd also ask for a condition that he possessed no guns. But there was evidence here that, um, as the allegations are, that he punched her in the face with a closed fist and slapped her uh, butt and pointed the gun in her face. Um, she did call 911. It also notes that um, in the investigator's report, the complainant did have, in fact, was observed with swelling and a red handprint mark on her butt and hip area. And she was treated at Henry Ford. And for those reasons, the people are asking for 10,000 cash surety, no contact, no guns. I do note that he does not have a capious or criminal history that I am aware of. All right. One final question, Mrs. Coyle. This occurred all, all several months ago, uh, about six months ago. Any, any? Are you aware of any contact between the parties since October you, last year? And Your Honor, I am not aware of anything. There were no APA notes indicating anything further assaultive or non-assaultive contact. Okay. All right, Counsel. Your Honor, we're asking for a personal bond, and if the court feels inclined, um, we have no objection to a tether. But as the court noted, um, this incident happened back in October. There's been no uh, evidence of any kind of assaultive um, or any kind of contact uh, in the six or seven intervening months. Mr. Uh, Moore does not have a lengthy criminal history. He certainly has a capious history. And he presented himself here this morning um, to uh, handle this matter. Um, contacted my office and asked about how we would, how he could go about um, addressing the case when he learned that there was a warrant. It's certainly not a flight risk, and um, if the court wants to initiate a no, uh, or impose a no contact order between the parties, um, I certainly think that um, evidence shows that was advice. Um, Mr. Moore does not appear to be a danger to the community at large. Uh, he's been living in the community for the last six months. He is employed. Um, he has received an offer letter from uh, AutoZone to become a manager there. Um, he has also um, been fighting a very serious cancer recurrence diagnosis. Um, he is currently receiving treatment. He had an appointment yesterday, which is why we postponed this today. He is due to have a CAT scan um, next week and a follow-up appointment based on that. Um, and they need to do a surgery, uh, life-saving surgery very quickly. So we would ask the court to consider that. Um, okay. Just one question, question counsel. Uh, the report indicates that the parties have the same address. Do they still reside together? I'm not familiar with where um, the complaining witness resides. Um, I, Can you have a sidebar with your count with your sure. client and ask the? Uh, so the address on 29th Street is Mr. Moore's house. He is indicating that she does um, currently still use that as her residence. But she's not physically there. I am not aware of okay, whether she's there or not. This, and I, I'm sorry. Having not had any conversations with this woman, this 
complaining witness. Uh, you know, I need to make any representations. I understand um, that. As to contact or no contact. No, I'm not asking you to make representation. I'm actually to represent what your client represents to the court. She is actively looking at that 29th Street address. So I think that actually maybe goes even further to show that there's not a danger. There's okay. Well, well, okay. Um, I appreciate the candor to the court, but sir, while this case is pending, you're going to have to, have to find another place to stay. We're considering no assaultive contact. No, no, no. These are very serious allegations. Um, given the factors and the age of the case, I would, I'd, I'd be, in, and plus the fact that he turned himself in voluntarily, I'd be more inclined to adhere to Mrs. Cole's request. And so as a, uh, I don't want them, I don't want him near that 29th Street address. He has to find another place to stay while his case is pending. Is that, will that pose a hardship to your client? Mr. Moore indicates that he can find an alternate residence. Um, he states that she could also find an alternate residence. So, um, no, I'm directing him. Understood. It is it is his home. I understand that. I understand that. But uh, while this case is pending, no contact with her nor the home. No contact means just that. No phone calls, text messages, emails, handwritten letters or notes to third parties or through social media. Is that clear, sir? Yes, sir. Does your client need a one-time visit to, to get his belongings, a police escort to get his belongings? Um, that would probably be helpful or um, my office can maybe arrange uh, contact to make sure she's not there for the purpose of doing that. Okay, so you don't, you don't need a police escort? Uh, if we do, you can contact the local precinct and see if he can uh, get assistance. Okay, I'll leave it up to you, okay, thank uh, you. counsel. Um, $10,000 per... Personal bond at this time, I don't see need for GPS tether. Again, you're not to possess any handguns, firearms, or other dangerous weapons. No contact with Courtney Woodfield. I indicated to you what that means, and no contact with the 29th Street address. One time police escort to get belongings if needed. Thank you. Give me one moment while I give you a court dates. Same right. phone number. Anthony Devon Hatcher Jr. Right here. Uh, Calling case number 24055-11201. Houston and Michigan versus Anthony Devon Hatcher Jr. Lisa Coyle appearing on behalf of, I'm sorry. Lisa Coyle appearing on behalf of the people. Brian Marab, P83665, on behalf of Mr. Anthony Hatcher. We waive the reading. Mr. Hatcher stands mute. He's been advised of his rights. Or not good to plea on behalf of your client. What is your bond recommendation, Mrs. Boyle? Your Honor, I know you're good at reading the allegations in the investigator's report, so I'm not going to go through it. But I'm asking for $50,000 cash on this one, even though from July of 23 and also tether house arrest, the complainant, um, the two complaints, one being a 15 year old and the mother, um, are the neighbors of Mr. Hatcher. And apparently, um, Mr. Hatcher did not like that the neighbor got involved in an altercation that um, it was try basically trying to defuse it. And that at some point he comes over and he alleged not only brandished the, the gun, his gun in his waistband. And then he, um, ki he kicks in the screen door. He comes in, he brandishes the gun, and then he then points the gun at both. Um, the complainants in the matter, and he cocks the gun. He also tells them that he should have firebombed their house. Um, Your Honor, these are extremely assaultive and extremely troubling. Now, I note um, at the time Mr. Hatcher was 18, he had no criminal history, but I do see, and I know the court doesn't take it into account, uh, but I do see a very um, troubling dismissal of an AWIM that occurred back in October of that same year. 
Your Honor. Um, so for this reason, um, also, Mr. I believe it was Mr. I'm not going to I don't like to say I'm not going to say um, the juvenile's name, but Mr. S. Um, said that he brand he identified the type of gun. He said it's a Glock because he's seen Mr. Hatcher with that gun before. Um, there's also ring footage from a neighbor, and on that ring footage, um, the complaint is set uh, studs on it. Um, even though you cannot see a gun on the ring footage, allegedly, because no one's seen the ring footage, but it says she says you're gonna come here with a gun. So. Here is something that shows she's speaking to Mr. Hatcher. She makes that uh, assertion that he's armed with a weapon. This is on somebody else's ring footage, Your Honor. There are not only one complaint, but there are two complaints. It's extremely troubling. And for that reason, Your Honor, the people are asking for that high cash bond, tether house arrest. Um, I am not aware. I know the court's going to ask. I am not aware of any L any issues between the complaints and uh, the defender at this point since July of 23, but based on, I know that this case wasn't even issued to sit, um, until December, the end of December of 23. Um, but based on what's alleged and the base of the seriousness of it, your honor, based on, I think the strength of the, uh, the evidence uh, that's shown, well, that presumably will be shown that two witnesses and a ring book, video. I think that uh, it's pretty strong to show that he is a danger to these complainants, what he, uh, what threats that he makes to them while pointing the gun, while he kicks in their door, Your Honor. Those are very troubling, and he's very dangerous as, as far as I'm concerned to these complainants. So for that reason, I'm asking for that bond and that monitorization. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mariah, I have one question before you proceed. In the court file, I have your client listed in a Southfield address. Is that accurate? And a report accurate. indicates that the complainant would act neighbor our neighbors. So, so he doesn't. He doesn't. He has. He, he's a Southfield resident. Is that correct? That's accurate. Correct. Correct. Okay. Proceed with your argument, Mr. Rod. Thanks, Judge. I was actually going to point that out with regard to the no contact. But um, to start, Mr. Hatcher turned himself into the jail. Um, he learned about this warrant and actually turned himself into the jail. So I want to start there. Um, I have no criminal convictions on behalf of Mr. Hatcher. I have no um, open cases upon Mr. H that are open on Mr. Hatcher. Um, no history of any probation or parole. Um, he's gainfully employed as a prep cook. Um, he has a stable residence with his parents. Um, he understands to have no contact with the complaining witness at all. And I don't think he has had any contact with them. I think his case is um, almost a year old judge with no issues between these former neighbors. Um, additionally, a couple of things I'll just point out. I, I understand the allegations, but um, a, few, a few things that favor Mr. Hatcher is, you know, in the second to last paragraph, it, it indicates that there was some sort of footage of some sort of dispute um, and that Mr. Hatcher and the complainants are actually seen having a disagreement on this footage. But in that footage, they don't see a firearm, according to the report. Um, yes, Mrs. Like Cole, the, I think I noted that as well. I believe she yep, noted that as correct. well. Yes. Correct. And additionally, I'll, I'll add um, that I would be asking the court to consider personal bond, given his lack of KPS history, given his lack of criminal convictions, given the age of the matter, and given the fact that it doesn't appear that these parties have had any issues subsequent to July of 2023, um, and that he turned himself in. I think all of those things should favor a personal bond with no contact, Judge, and he understands that um, he's going to be working and not having any contact with the complainants. I'm asking for personal here, Judge. Rod, does he have any relatives? Why was he at the Auburn... Uh, at uh, that block, uh, is, is, does he have a parent that lives there? What's who live there? If he's Judge, a South Korean, why was he there? That because you know, is the court going to make no, me answer I, that? No, Judge, no, no, I have to no, admit no, that he's there. No. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me rephrase the question: Does he have any friends and relatives that live on that block? Um, I believe he did at that time, uh, but now he has absolutely no reason to go back to that block for any reason. Is that correct, Mr. Hatcher? I need, I need you to say yes or no. You can, uh, I'm sorry, yes, sir. I have no contact with anyone. Okay. 
And is he employed, Mr. Murad? He is, Judge. He works locally as a prep cook. Did he finish high school? Um, he did. He finished the 12th grade recently. $50,000 personal bond with the following conditions. While this case is pending, you're not to possess any handguns, firearms, or other dangerous weapons. No contact with Kiava nor Malik Stewart. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. No contact means just that. No phone calls, text messages, handwritten letters and notes, emails, to the social media to the third party. You're not to enter the 12,000 block. You're not to go on the 12,000 block of Auburn at all. Yes, sir. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Probable cause, May 28th, preliminary examination, June 4th. Give me one moment. Give me one moment, please. Okay, Mr. Hatcher, uh, probable cause, May 28th, preliminary examination, June 4th, in front of Judge Sabri. Any questions regarding your bond and or court dates? I need you to say no. Okay. no What's your name, sir? My name is Marcus Baldwin Jr., sir. Calling case number 240-447-5901, People City, Michigan versus Marcus Baldwin. Appearances, please. Lisa Coyle, appearing on behalf of the people. And Ryan Murad, P83665, on behalf of Mr. Marcus Baldwin. We waive the reading. Mr. Baldwin stands mute. He's been advised of his rights. For a not guilty plea on behalf of Mr. Baldwin. What is your bond recommendation, Mrs. Coyle? Your Honor, this is a tough one in the sense that both make allegations that the other was the person who initiated the um, physical altercation. In this matter, I do not see other than a CCW in 2021 that was pled down to a misdemeanor. Any other um, criminal history, nothing assaultive. Um, in this matter, I also noted that uh, the APA had noted that it was alleged defendant put complaint in a chokehold when trying to, she was trying to contact the officers and that's why she pepper sprayed the defendant. For this matter, Your Honor, this is um, just happened two days ago. Um, we have a dating relationship. I do not see anything with children or residing together. So the main concern is keeping the two people apart um, for safety reasons. So for this matter, Your Honor, I have no objection to a $35,000 personal bond, but I'm asking for a tether so they have no contact because these are pretty serious allegations in that. She had uh, her nose was bleeding. He alleged that she pepper sprayed him, um, Your Honor. And so I, I, I see this as possibly um, elevating to something that should not. So for that reason, I'm asking for the high personal bond with the tether. Thank you. Mr. Rod, can you address the issue of tether alone, please? Yes, Judge. Um, with regard to the tether, I'd indicate that Mr. Baldwin's gainfully employed. Um, he works as his father's uh, car transporter with his father's own business, and he's also a janitor um, as well. Um, he indicates, Judge, that he does not reside with the complaining witness, lives with his mother. I think the report reflects that as well. It doesn't seem that there's any priors that are concerning in this particular matter. Um, and, it, you know, there's, there, as, as the people indicated, there's a really a strong argument for self-defense here. Looks like there was brothers called or something along those lines. A lot of question of fact. I think for those reasons, his lack of capious history, lack of criminal history, um, I would ask the court for personal bond, especially that there's no children or shared residence. No, I, 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 I Mr. Murad. Oh, and uh, personal bond. With no I, asked you, I asked you to address Tether, did I not? You did. Did but you I got to tell you what a rock star my client is and all the good things about him, too, Joe. No, I, 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 Mr. Rod, let me repeat myself. Why shouldn't I give him a tether? I'm inclined to. I mean, and you disregarded everything I asked. 
Sorry, Judge. I guess, I mean, honestly, really, why does he, he's never had any domestic issue with this person before. It looks like he could be alleged to be a victim here as well. Um, he has no capious history. He's never missed court. I think he had one CCW case. You know, there's no capious history that was mentioned on that. It was reduced to a misdemeanor. Nothing really scary about Mr. Baldwin. Judge, he's working. He's not staying in trouble all the time. Um, and these people don't live together. They don't have any kids together. They have no reason to come together. All the time. What does that mean in English? That means he, you know, he slipped up once with a CCW case and there's no violent history. He's just not a danger. He's not a threatening person. He's not somebody who should, we should, you know, put a tether on and lock up. I think he's someone that can go back to work and understand that to not contact this person. I don't think he's going to need a, a GPS tether to, to ensure that. I think, you know, he can do that on his own, Judge. Okay, Ms. Murad, and given how this is a, a fresh incident, all right, basically yesterday, I'm going to put a tether on him with a curfew. I think emotions are still running high. These are very serious allegations, assault allegations. It is not unnoted, um, your argument that may be self-defense allegations, but I'm persuaded by Mr. Cole's argument that these, this is escalating and may escalate further. Like I said, this just occurred yesterday. And it's, my, it's been my experience that emotions are still running wrong. And I want to make sure that they stay apart. So $35,000 personal bond, GPS tether, 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew. Yes. He works nights, he works nights Judge. Um, I mean, can we just do an exclusion is, zone if we're doing the tether? Do we have to no, do the no, curfew, no, Your no. Honor? Can we? Okay, you said a lot at once there, Mr. Murad. Sorry, I tend to do that. You didn't make any sense? Let's start doing so, the first question. Let, let me ask the question you answer. Okay, can we do that? We'll try. What are his work, what are his work hours? Uh, for the janitor job, it's 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. And? And for the uh, car transportation, um, I, I think it fluctuates. Mr. Baldwin, can you tell the magistrate what hours you work that job, sir? Yes, with the car transportation, I work with my father, so that fluctuates sometimes at 6, 7 in the morning. And if he's making Ohio, depending on what drop-offs he's making Ohio or you can't, Ohio. State, sir. you can't leave the state. Oh, okay. Okay, Your Honor. Okay, so you want to put that on hold. All the hours of the other job. He said 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. Mr. Rod? Yeah, yes, Judge. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, you'll be at your house between 3 a.m. and 5 p.m. So you can work your night job. The other job with the father, because the child was out of state, uh, you're not gonna be able to go to that. Hey, Your Honor, I had a Zoom court yesterday. I was in here, I missed court yesterday, I had Zoom. Hey, 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 Mr. Balda. Uh -uh. What is it, what does it got to do with me, sir? It has nothing to do, Your Honor. We're ready to move on. I'll I'll, I'll reach out to you with those steps, Mr. Bob. You're on Zoom today. Thanks. Free trial. Free trial, May 29th, in front of Judge Garrett. Have a good day, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. 